Well, hey guys, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Gospel Simplicity, a place where we are passionate about the beautiful simplicity and transformative power of the gospel. We're all to talk about life, Jesus, and the journey of faith in a real honest and open way. So if that at all interests you and you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe down below to become a part of what we're doing here on this channel. Well, guys, welcome back to Quotes of the Week. It's a Monday, which means it's time for Quotes of the Week. It also means I'm in cozy clothes, rocking Smokey the Bear today. And I gotta tell you, it's feeling like a Monday. It, it's one of those days where it's uh, it's looking like a long week ahead, but I'm excited for it. We are almost to Thanksgiving break, which means, by the way, next week, I will probably be taking the whole week off from making videos. I love making these videos, but I think it's gonna be really nice to just take a week of rest, spend some time with some family, and just enjoy that. So I hope you do the same. Maybe take a week off from watching uh, some YouTube videos or just lessen a little bit and just soak in that time. I'd really encourage you with that. But anyway, today we are here with quotes of the week, and I want to bring some of these quotes to you, which if you are new, the quotes of the week videos are all about me sharing with you from some of the books Books that I'm reading throughout the week. I'm a student at Moody Bible Institute. I'm a theology major. Put those two things together and it means I spend more hours than are in a day reading. Don't ask me how that's possible, but that's what it feels like. So this is just an opportunity for me to share with you out of some of just the, the great resources that I'm uh, coming across and reading. And yeah, so I hope it makes an impact in your life. The first quote I want to share with you guys today is from Oswald Sanders' book, Spiritual Discipleship. And it says this, we can be absolutely certain that his, meaning God's, sovereignty will never clash with his paternity. All his dealings with his frail and failing children are dictated by unchanging love. And this is something that I hope is a real comfort for you. Sometimes the idea of God's sovereignty can be really scary. You might say, what is sovereignty? Great question. Depending on who you ask, you're going to get different answers. But it's essentially the idea of God being in control of all things. He is all powerful. Omnipotent is a word that people who want to sound smart sometimes use. Um, but it's just basically that God is in control over all things. Having created all things, he is supreme over all things. And that can sometimes be scary. Like, oh, is God like just controlling these? Like, what is he doing? Is he going to make things happen that I don't like? And it can be kind of scary. The idea of an all powerful being is intimidating to finite creatures who realize like I am at just the will of God. Like he is ultimately in control. I am nothing. And in a way, that's a good thing to realize. It's, it's humbling, but we do need to realize that we're not that special like god is in control and in light of him we really aren't much at all but there's no need to be fearful on behalf of god's sovereignty because god's sovereignty is never at odds with god's paternity with his unfailing self-sacrificial love god is presented to us by jesus as a Father. That is the primary way Jesus tells us to relate to God. When his disciples ask him to teach them how to pray, he starts with Abba, which means like daddy. Like it's this intimate term for a father that a son would use with his father. He's like, that's how you can relate to God. And then he follows that up with hallowed be thy name, right? Like to do your name be glory. So he, he shows those two things like God is a father and God is sovereign and deserving of glory. But his love his love always is what defines him. In 1 John, we read that God is love. In his very nature, he is love. So there is nothing to fear because perfect love casts out all fear. I hope that encourages you and maybe just helps you come to terms with God's sovereignty in a different and better way. All right, guys, the next two quotes I have for you kind of go together. They're both quotes that were quoted in a book I'm reading about prayer, and they have to do with the section of the Lord's Prayer where it says, deliver us from evil. And the first quote is by theologian N.T. Wright, who has a special place in my heart. He's a brilliant guy. A lot of his books have really influenced the way that I think, and I would recommend many of them. And the quote is this, to pray, deliver us from evil, is to inhale the victory of the cross and thereby to hold the line for another moment, another hour, another day against the forces of destruction within ourselves and the world. And what he's saying here is that, you know, to say, God, deliver us from evil is us recognizing that God is the one who can do that because the war has already been won. But yet the, 
the fight still wages. Like, like God has conquered death and sin. Yet right now, it's kind of this already but not yet that you'll hear people talk about. Like he has already finished the work of your salvation. But right now you're still in the process of putting off your old self. Sin still has this grip on you. We, we tend to just still be allured towards sin. And so we're still fighting this battle. And in this world, we will have troubles. And it's talking about like spiritual realities too. And Paul talks about, you know, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and authorities. Like there is a serious spiritual battle going on to say, deliver us from evil is saying, God, I'm going to keep holding on because I know you can deliver me. Yet right now it's hard, so I'm gonna hold the line that you've thrown to me for another day, another hour. I will keep going. God, deliver me from evil because I know you can, and I know ultimately you have, but for right now, the fight wages on, and we must hold on to what God is doing. And as a follow-up to this quote, there's another quote by John Piper, who a lot of you might be familiar with. He has uh, Desiring God Ministries, Big Voice, uh, especially with, in relation to Calvinism. But just in general, he's, he's a great thinker. And um, if you're not a Calvinist, don't let some of his teachings on that dissuade you from seeing some of the genuine, uh, just great teaching that he has on other things. But he says this, until you believe that life is war, you cannot know what prayer is for. And I, if you know me, if you've ever listened to my messages, I'm a sucker for a good rhyme. I love Andy Stanley. I love just sticky phrases that you can really remember and rhyme does that well. And so until you believe that life is war, you cannot know what prayer is for. And this is a reality we have to see. Like life is difficult. We are constantly at war within ourselves as N.T. Wright put it, like we have these sinful desires within ourselves that we have to battle. And then with the world around us, just the allure of sin, just the desires of the flesh, the powers and principalities, like there's serious like spiritual stuff. Like we are in a battle to stay just following after God. Pursuing God is not something that will happen easily. We have to fight for that. We have to fight for purity. You have to fight for just holiness and righteousness. You have to fight for a heart devoted to God. It is not easy. But once you recognize that life is war in this, then you'll have a new, renewed vigor for prayer because you'll realize, God, I need your help in these battles that are waging within me and around me. And God, I can't do this on my own, but you can. And so that is when we get a greater appreciation for prayer. All right, last quote for you guys comes from Pete Gregg's book, How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. And in it, he says this, We cannot detach our relationships with people from our relationship with God. We cannot be more reconciled with him than we are with our neighbor. And this is a truth that can be unsettling for some of us because some of us like to think that our relationship with God is just this personal thing that we have that doesn't necessarily have to impact the rest of our lives. It's like me and God and then the rest of my life. Like it's just me and God and that's all my spiritual life is about. Like it's almost this just detached thing and that's just really not what the New Testament, what the Bible shows us. He's actually riffing off of 1 John 4 20 where John talks about that, like, if we don't have love for our brother, we can't claim to have love for God. How do we show that we have love for God? By loving our brother. We can't hate a brother and say we love God. Those things, they don't work together. Yet so often we want them to. So often we want to say, oh, I'm good with God, but I hate these people. And we've seen this all throughout history. Tragically, Christians have claimed to have this relationship with God while doing atrocious things to their neighbors, seeing people as less than human, hating their brothers, yet saying they love God. But if we truly love God, if we truly love the creator of the world who is in his very essence love, and that love will pour out of us. When we worship God and we truly see him as he is, that will transform who we are. When we behold him, we will begin to be conformed to the image of his, his son, which we've talked about before on this channel. Like when we truly see God as he is, that should transform us. So if you're not finding that love for your brother in your life outside of, you know, Sunday morning, then I would challenge you that perhaps you're not truly worshiping God as he really is. Perhaps you haven't come to realize how God actually is or you're not truly worshiping him because once we understand what god is who has been infinitely loving us for all of time then we can't help but experience the overflow of that love in our life for those around us so i really encourage you if you want to love god you must love your brother you cannot be more reconciled with god than 
your neighbor. Maybe take action on this today, this very week. Say, you know what? I need to make things right with those around me because it's hypocritical to try to balance both things. So that's not an easy thing, but I would encourage you to do that. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate you. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that there's things from this video that you can apply to your life this very week. If so, that just means the world to me. And that's why I do this. So I hope that's the case. In any case, guys, I want to say once more, thank you. It means the world to me. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like, leave me a comment down below. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe to become a part of what we're doing here on this channel. Until next time, guys, be on the lookout for more videos and go out and love God and love others because that will change the world. Peace. Love you guys so much. See you next time.